So I have a review today. This was sent into the channel. Um, it's the uh, Fernacy, Fernacy, Fier, yeah, I forget. I can't pronounce that. Do you, can you pronounce that? Let's see. Rissy, Nerissy, Thinrissy. I don't know. Um, mini, mini oscilloscope. This is the model uh, DSO-152. Comes with a probe. <clears throat> All right, uh, you get the, uh, I've been playing with it, put it back in the box. Um, you get the actual device. It's got a little uh, thing on the back so you can prop it up. That's kind of nice. Uh, I'm fascinated by the uh, little strap that they give you. Now, 99.999% of the straps I've ever seen are just woven nylon. And this one has a faux leather strap. <laughs> it's just a rubber strap, but it's faux, faux leather. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's amazing. <laughs> anyway, I haven't seen anything like that. Um, it's not touchscreen. Uh, let's see here. Let's, uh, let's turn it on. So here's the, here's the go button. There we go. And it boots nice and fast. So, yeah. Let's, uh, <clears throat> let's see what, uh, comes with it. Oh, in the back here, <clears throat> instruction manual, oops, instruction manual, uh, clip leads with the funny little connector. There's a funny little connector on the oh, here that you, uh, oops, this one, this thing here plugs into that slot there. And there's a little jog button on the top and there's a little uh, calibrator output on here, uh, USB-C. Yeah, that's what comes with it. All right, so let's, uh, this thing has a, <clears throat> I think it has a, calib a, uh, a calibration mode. I want to see if we can calibrate before we use it here. Uh, let's see here, so something about a firmware upgrade. Uh, use this USB, okay, because you can upgrade it in the field when calibrating, blah, 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 blah. When calibrating, you need to unplug the BNC probe or short the positive. Uh, da, 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 USB firmware. Okay, so let's uh, turn it on. <coughs> have to hold. I think it's a long button hold to turn it on. There we go. And then if I'm going to push down on the, there we go, Calib. Please press Run or to start calibration or press OK to exit. So we'll hit Run. We'll let it calibrate itself. I hear it clicking. It doesn't say it's calibrating, but I heard some relays click. Interesting. Okay. <clears throat> so let's get out the uh, <clears throat> scope probe. These things are a dime a dozen now. It's amazing. Uh, 100 megahertz, 10 to 1 probe. Nice. All right. So this just clicks on like that. And uh, let's hook it up to its own calibrator. That would be fun. Oh, look at that. Oof. It's hard to, there we go. All right, we'll hit auto. See if it autos right. Wow, that's a long auto process. Wow. <laughs> okay. Uh, mode. So, oh, here. <clears throat> auto, normal, single sweep. Okay. So we hit auto. We'll run. Um, and then we can use the jog wheel and set which thing we're looking at. So this is the size times one, times ten. So we'll do times ten probe. Uh, we can change the uh, horizontal. There we go. Uh, how do we get rid of all those numbers? I don't know how to get rid of all the numbers. Let me do that because those are going to drive me crazy. <coughs> okay. <clears throat> if you hit the run button a long time, it turns off all those numbers and stuff. So, yeah, there we go. All right. Let's uh, hook it up to a function generator so I can 
can test things. Oops. Okay, let's do sine waves. They're jumping around. So let's change the, uh, here we go. So there is our sine wave. We can set the trigger level by jogging to it. The thing that's being active is in blue, so now I can change the, uh, can I hold it down? Yeah, I can hold it down. I'll just put the trigger there somewhere in the middle. All right, and then we can go over to the time base. Go in, there we go, that looks better. Okay, so let me change the, uh-oh. Uh what did I just do? Why did I wiggle? All right, here we are at uh, one kilohertz. Uh, this is 10 kilohertz, and that's 100 kilohertz, and it just died. So let's go back to 100 kilohertz. And we will keep it going. And let's see here. Let's increase the uh, time base. Let's see what's going on. That's as fast as it goes, which is 10 microseconds. 10 microseconds. And we'll just keep going faster and faster and faster. And things are still fine. 10 kilo. Okay, so let's go to... 100 kilohertz. Go back here. This is 100 kilohertz. And there it starts to die. It claims to be a 200, a 200 kilohertz oscilloscope, and I would agree with that. So 200 kilohertz. Let's go back down lower for something. Let's go to, uh, let's see, 1,000, 10,000. Let's see here, 1,000. So four, this is 10,000. All right, let's go to a uh, triangle wave. That looks good. It jumps around. It is it is a bit jumpy. Uh, there's a square wave. Yeah, so it's uh, it's doing the thing. All right, I always like triangle waves. I find them more interesting. Let's do an auto on this and see what happens. Yeah. Okay. That worked out pretty good. Um, again, we can go, so this is five volts per division. Oops, let me go over to that. What is the f smallest we can get here? Oh, 100 millivolts per division, that's good. Let me uh, try to uh, lower my function generator down. Yeah, look at that. Okay, so 100 millivolts per division is good. And then what's the maximum? Oops. I'm not used to the menu yet. 100 volts per division. Wow. Amazing. Okay. Uh, let me turn up my generator here. How much, how big can it go? Five, yeah. So it can go about plus or minus 20, 20 volts. <coughs> and this thing is keeping up. Uh, like I said, there's uh, run stop is nice. So you can do single shot. Uh, so even though it's kind of wiggly around a little bit, you can always just hit the hit the stop button. And uh, yeah, things are looking pretty good. Let's try some more difficult waveforms. All right, <clears throat> so I've changed generators here. Let me uh, go to something interesting. Let's go to a uh, a sync pulse. Oh, oh yeah, that's what I thought. See, it's having a hard time. Uh, actually triggering on a sync pulse. If I hit the run stop button, it does catch single events, but it's pulsing up and down. So yeah, it's not able to trigger on these uh, on these events. Let me uh, try to change the horizontal here, see if that helps any. Oh, there we go. So if we zoom way in and it, it's getting it, yeah, it's not too bad. Okay. It's handling that. Uh, let's go to a exponent. Looks good. Uh, here's a electrocardiogram. Looks good. Yeah. So it seems to be working okay. 
Now, I know people are going to say, well, it's 200 kilohertz. What am I going to be able to do with that? Well, you can be able to do a lot with that. It's still within the audio range. And if you're just starting out, um, I, I encourage people to get oscilloscopes because although I learned without an oscilloscope, I had to use my imagination. I, I looked at the books and the books told me certain things were happening and I kind of had to use my imagination of what really was going on. The first time you get your hands on an oscilloscope and you're able to actually see the waveforms, it is a big breakthrough. And um, this is $25, okay? So a $25 oscilloscope um, and to be able to see something like that, I think is invaluable. Um, is it going to be accurate? Uh, is it going to be able to see certain things? Uh, <laughs> it's $25. I mean, give me a break. Um, if you had a classroom where you're teaching electronics and you just handed these out to every single student, or better yet, you had them go down to the bookstore at the university and everybody had to buy one of these, and then you would do teach, you would teach things, right? You would say, okay, today we're going to learn about, uh, we're going to learn about an exponent. So let me put it back on uh, uh, exponent. Let's see. We're going to learn all about a, a, a falling exponent and we're going to do the math and we're going to learn why that does and everything. And then we're going to do a, a rising uh, let's see here. Oh, that's the rising and that's the falling. Yeah, there you go. See, and I mean, you could do a whole bunch of things, right? Like, like the sync pulse and everything and, and learn all about, learn all about sync pulses. Um, do the Fourier transforms and stuff on them. Um, so I say for 25 bucks, it's a steal. Um, now, would I recommend you get a better one? Yes. Uh, but if it's the first time or you only do low frequency stuff or you're maybe only working on automotive equipment or only working on, you know, audio equipment, stereo equipment, and stuff like that. Sometimes it's just enough to see that there is a waveform there, not even measure the waveform, just make sure there's a waveform there, right? Like I just made my own sync generator, you know, is it actually doing that? God, I hate spam. Um, and so, yeah, there it is. Um, very nice. You can check the linearity of things. Uh, let's go back to a, uh, go back to a ramp and you could, you could zoom, you could zoom way on this and zoom in on this and say, you know, is it, is it triggering? No, but <laughs> I can just, I can just hit the run stop button and I could just, I could just check, is it linear, right? What am I, I want to make a stair step generator. Let's see, I can do that right here. Uh, da, 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 da. Let me. This is a, a thing that I programmed myself. Um, let's see, we can go to waveform. We can go to, <clears throat> I just hit the auto button and there we go. It found it. Okay. So now we can zoom in on that. All right. So I made, I made this arbitrary waveform, which has, uh, individually sized steps, right? And, um, you, you can just check the, uh, the accuracy of your, of your thing. Um, I think it's supposed to be a volt. So one, two, three, four, five. So exactly one volt from there to there. And then 10th of a volt steps. And you see there's two steps per 200 millivolts range. So the thing's in calibration, right? I've just checked my oscilloscope that it's calibrated. But if you program this in your Arduino, and you wanted to see this actually working, this is a great little tool, right? You could keep this on your software bench and then go out to the garage and use your fancy tools, right? When you want to do the hardware stuff. Um, so I think there's lots of uses for these little $25 toys, you know, um, they, they, they definitely have their place.